<clears throat> Done. How do you know when you're done? Last week, I mentioned uh, that I was trying to bake some shortbread in my sermon last week. How do you know when that's done? How do you determine when a cake is done? Anybody know? Can poke it. You poke it with, uh, not your finger. <laughs> I gotta be clear here. A toothpick. Yeah, like it's something like a toothpick, and if it comes out clean, it's done, right? When you're cooking meat, it's basically the same thing. You poke it with a thermometer, and if it's the right temperature, it's done. That's pretty simple. I can do that. The prophet Elijah, well, he thought he was done but not in the same way. Oh yes, in our first reading, actually before our first reading, he'd had a great win, a great accomplishment. He had defeated and destroyed 450 priests of the Canaanite god Baal. Baal, just like saying it. And maybe for a brief moment he thought, I'm done. I showed them that king's going to have to listen to me. I'm, I've won. I am done. But alas, it didn't turn out that way. Instead, the king told his wife, Queen Jezebel, and this is where the word name Jezebel gets, comes from, um, Besides Mary and Eve, that is perhaps the most commonly known female character in the Bible. Maybe people don't know exactly about her, but we've tossed that name Jezebel around. And so uh, those 450 priests were hers. Those were her priests. She worshiped Baal. And so she sent a message to Elijah, telling him, I am going to kill you. You will be dead. If I have my way, you will join those other priests. So at the start of our passage for today, Elijah thinks he's done, but done for. The king and the queen want him dead. So he flees, he runs away. He runs away to a whole other kingdom. And he doesn't even stop there. He hightails it a whole nother day into the wilderness. So he's tired. He's tired. He's worn out. He's afraid. He's dejected. He's depressed probably out of food and water. He doesn't see a future. And he plops down under a bush, asks God to take his life right then and there. Exhausted, he falls asleep. Perhaps, like Elijah, you too know that feeling. Perhaps, like Elijah, it hits when everything seems to be going fine, when things are going pretty well, and then, I don't know, something or someone strikes and knocks the wind right out of you, cuts you down, bowls you over, and you feel done. Done trying, done caring, just done. As a pastor through these many years, more than once I've known of an older person who have told me, I don't know why I wake up every morning. They may not be in pain, they may not be suffering, but they just don't feel a purpose. They don't feel a reason for their existence. 
They feel like they are done living and they just don't know why they're still around. And they ask, why am I still here? If God could only take me, I've even heard that language. There seems to come a time when it feels like asking, what's the point? What's the point of trying? What's the point of striving? What's the point of struggling? Or even just getting up, feeling done. That's what Elijah felt. And then I can imagine him getting a little poke. Because when he awoke, when he opened his eyes, he wasn't alone. God sent a messenger, a someone. It's the word we get for angel. And here is where I think we can pay particular attention as well. What does the angel, the messenger, do and say? What does he do? Hmm? It's a question. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Eat. He says, eat. Eat. Here, have something to eat. Eat something. The messenger brings Elijah a meal. Have you ever brought someone a meal? I know a lot of us have. You ever think of yourself being a messenger from God? When you brought a meal to someone? You can. I really think you can. I can imagine the two of them sitting there in the shade of that bush, and Elijah takes a bite to eat and chewing it a bit. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but sometimes when you are really suffering, when you are feeling really done, it's maybe hard to get that next bite down. Take a bite, and you stop. It's hard, food can lose its taste. Your stomach is like, I can't take one more. Your throat kind of closing up. But the messenger, I can imagine saying, take another bite. Go ahead, chew, swallow, here's some water, eat. Eventually, Elijah has had enough. He lays down on his side, once again closes his eyes, wanting an end, tired, but now with something in his stomach. He falls asleep once again. He sleeps. And again, the messenger, I imagine, poking, nudging him. How about we say nudge instead of poking? And says, eat again. And adds, otherwise the journey will be too much. Eat. In other words, Elijah, you may feel like you are done. You may feel like you are done. But God's not done with you. God's not done with you yet. It is, I think, really important to note that the first words to Elijah, the Holy One through this messenger, did not command or cajole or guilt Elijah. Get back on your feet. Instead, God's presence sat down with him in the dirt and ate with him, nourished Elijah, continued on, and that's so often what we need, really. We don't necessarily need someone to hit us right up away, right up with some nice platitude. Keep your chin up, old chap. <laughs> we don't need someone to point out to us, you know, it's really not that terrible what you're going through. You know, people have done that. It's not as bad, you know, when a door closes, a window opens, all that garbage. No. We need to be sat with. We need to be sat with, sit, and eat. 
That's where perhaps some of us are here today. We come because we know what it's like to feel done. And we need a moment. We need a rest. We need to be fed. And so God sends us. God sends us messengers, angels. Sometimes it's a word from scripture, a word in the sermon, perhaps, a lyric in the song, how the notes fit together of the clarinet or the ukulele, whatever we got going, or Diane's gift on the piano. Perhaps it's the touch of a hand during the sharing of the piece or an embrace or it's a bit of bread, the bread of life, the bread of healing. Being told and hearing, this is for you. This is for you, for everybody. But it's poured out and broken and given for you. And all that's going on and all that we go through, it might be too much, really feeling like it's too much. But take and eat, because God's not done. God's not done with us. God isn't done with each one of us, calling us into a deeper growth and relationship, deeper into love, living that love. God isn't done with us as individuals. God surely isn't done with us as a congregation. God is not done feeding us for the journey that we have ahead. Amen.